everybody and welcome to uh, today's Periscope, our weekly Periscope. I'm Ron Deal, a marriage and family therapist and author and speaker, and I'm glad to have you with me. We talk about marriage and relationships and family on this uh, broadcast, and so good to have you here. I'm sitting at my workspace today in the home office of Family Life in Little Rock, Arkansas, so it's good to have you with us. By the way, where are you from? Go ahead, just uh, scroll up the screen there, give me your comments we'd love to see where you're from nice to have you my uh, hello i'm sorry i don't know how to pronounce that <laughs> but we're glad you're here um we'll get started here in just a minute it's uh it's interesting to me i read a quote on an article the other day non-traditional is the new traditional yeah well that's true today we're going to be talking about step families and 20 years ago 25 years ago, every book I read talked about the non-traditional family. Well, the non-traditional family, I think, is the traditional family now. And uh, so we need to spend some time talking about step families today. Again, glad to have you with us. If you're just logging on, this is our Periscope. Leanne, nice to have you with us. Um, I'm curious where you're from. Feel free as you, as you join us to uh, type in your location and where you're from, we'll be able to keep track of that. By the way, if you're not familiar with Periscope, here's how it works. Tap the screen if you like what you're hearing at any point, um, just, and it gives us some hearts. And what that does is it helps other people find this broadcast, which is helpful. Atlanta, all right, nice to have you. Shanti Bailey, good to have you with us. Um, so feel free to make comments and add questions. Uh, my trusted colleague, Shannon, is sitting just over there and she's going to be watching your comments and your questions and kind of gathering them and then handing them to me along the way. So I'm going to spend some time talking today about step parenting do's and don'ts and then we'll uh, talk about a bonus subject and then I'll kind of be fielding some of your questions and comments as we go along. So again feel free to uh, type those in there in the, in the box, comment box or question box at any point and Shannon will be gathering those for us. By the way, we were also wondering something today you can help us out with and that is how long do you think a periscope should last? All right? So if you have an idea about that, is it five minutes, ten minutes, is it an hour, is that too long? For you to be able to chime in on a periscope like this, a lunch and learn opportunity, how long should it last? That would help us out as we're learning how to bring this, uh, this broadcast to you. Okay, step parenting, do's and don'ts. Number one, do make sure the biological parent has your back. And here's what I mean by that. If you're the step parent, especially in the early days of a step family's journey together, you need lots of support, all right? You've got to have somebody behind you so that when you make a decision, when you hand down a consequence, when you enforce a household rule as a step parent, you need to know that the biological parent has your back. There's a great deal of power difference between being a biological parent and a step parent. If you're familiar with any of my books and resources for step families, I spend a lot of time kind of breaking this down for people. And the reason it's important is this, is that in a children's heart and in their mind, they're, especially in the beginning, learning how to embrace you, accept you, bring you into their life, and see you as an authority figure and also as a parent figure. And as they try to wrestle through all the emotional stuff over there, the psychological pieces to that, and their loyalties to their biological mom or dad that's not in the house. There's a lot going on for them, so they're trying to figure out how to place you. So, if you come in like a teacher or a coach or a camp counselor on day one, that's easier to embrace you because they have teachers, lots of them. They have coaches, they have camp counselors, they have people in their lives who get to tell them what to do but don't expect a deep love bond relationship. So if you work in that domain from the beginning, it's really helpful to the children to then embrace your authority on that level. I call that positional authority. You have the position of an adult as somebody married to their parent who's in the household. And so clearly you get to have some authority, right? Well, if you come in expecting a lot of love and, and, and relationship and bonding and demanding that, well, that's relational authority. And that's something they have with their biological parents, um, but not necessarily with you. Over time, the beautiful thing for step parents is that over time you can grow into that place in a child's heart, but you have to earn it. 
And so in the meantime, until you have that level of relationship and bondedness with a child, you are standing not on your two feet, you're standing on the, the feet, if you will, of the biological parent. They're the one who has to back you up. They're the one who passes power to you. So if you make sure they, you have their uh, backing, then on the fly as you make decisions and do life, then they're with you. If you have a disagreement, and by the way, you will have disagreements. Put any two people together trying to parent children, you're going to have disagreements. I don't care if it's your ch ch child that you share, or if this is a stepchild to you and a biological, it doesn't matter. All right, you're going to have disagreements. The point is, if you know you got one another's back, that even though you have a disagreement about it, you can work through it, you can talk through it, you can figure out what to do next time, but you're trying, striving for unity, which takes me to our second tip of the day and that is do strive for unity in your parenting and let me tell you this just means conversation right discussing values what you want to teach the kids over time uh, your expectations the boundaries that you're gonna set for them consequences and values by the way I'm, I'm a dad got three kids um, been through a lot of parenting in my life got a lot more to go I can tell you you can't decide all of it ahead of time nobody's that proactive nobody's that smart none of us are a lot of life in parenting is living on the fly, okay? But in general, we kind of know what's coming. We can kind of anticipate that. We kind of know what kind of expectations we want for kids in terms of how they help out around the house and how they treat one another and uh, you know, sharing in the home. I mean, all those kinds of values that you're gonna try to teach your children. And so the more conversation you have as a, as a parenting team, the better you're gonna do in managing life. If you get ahead of it, you have unity. If something happens on the fly and you didn't know really what to say or how to answer that question, always a good idea is to pause and say, I don't know, I'm gonna get back to you on that one. Now I know kids are gonna push back. They'll push back against a biological parent, say, Dad, you never had to ask anybody that before, why do you have to ask her? Well, it's a good question, son. That's what I would re reply with. Good question, you're right. I never had to ask anybody before when I was a single dad, but now I have a wife and she's a consideration of me. And I've got to ask her opinion because she's part of the team. Now, I know that's inconvenient for you, but you'll be okay. Well, nice little smile on your face at that point. And I'll get back to you. Right? And then go about your business and talking to the stepmom, and you guys come up with your plan. Sometimes the step parent's the one who's got to make a decision on the fly. And later finds out, ah, there was good reason, didn't know about this, could have considered that. Maybe there was a different decision to make. Okay, All right? it is what it is. Uh, it's fine for you to have that conversation, find unity, and decide what to do next time as a couple. And you just go back to the kids and go, look, this time we said yes, but in the future the answer is going to be no, and here's why. That's teaching, that's training. We're all in this thing together. Tip number three for step parents don't be harsh or parent and punish in a way that is inconsistent with what the biological parent would do. This is a setup. If you parent in a way that the other parent can't back, you're just shooting yourself in the foot, right? If you have a style, meaning a harshness or a temper or an attitude or, a, or you're threatening in some way, I mean, sometimes it's just your face. <laughs> sometimes it has to do with uh, how the tone of your voice. Or if there's a style to how you parent that makes it hard for the biological parent to join you and support you or for the kids to obey you, well, that's on you. Right? And we all have those things, those quirks about us that we got to try to grow and, and change. But if you know that, you come to know that about yourself, you really got to manage that because it just makes it more difficult for other people to support you, especially the biological parent, and you don't want that. Okay, number four, do focus on building relationship with the kids. Ultimately, that is your strength and that is your power as a step parent is relationship. Now, on day one after the wedding, you don't have a lot. You've got a little bit in the bank. You've already built some during the dating process, but it's not really real until after the wedding, especially for the kids, because before you were just playing and hanging around and having ice cream together, and now you're telling them that they got to clean their room. Those are two different things, right? So until it's real, it's really not real. So that's when you start trying to build relationship with this, with the, each child. The old adage rules without relationship equals rebellion is true. It is especially true for step parents. It's true for biological parents. It is especially true for step parents. 
Now, I just want to point out one downside to this whole process of trying to pursue the child and build a relationship. There's a principle in relationships. The person who is least invested in that relationship has the most power. So think about a marriage for a minute. Some of you have been through this. You were married to somebody and you were really invested in making things better and they weren't. Well, you didn't have much power, but they had a lot. The person with the least investment in a relationship has the most power. Same thing true works in parenting. So a step-parent who's pursuing a relationship with a stepchild who is not invested like you are, it makes it really difficult for you to get anywhere. Right? It's just a closed door. It's very discouraging, can be very challenging, and sometimes you just want to quit, defeat, right? Well, don't quit. I mean, your power is in finding that connection, getting that door to crack open. Don't bang it down. We're not talking about beating it down. We're talking about just gently standing outside that door and knocking, being around the child's heart, around their life, waiting for them to soften and then open the door to you. And they may just crack it open a little bit, but that's how it starts. That's how you grow. So I'm thinking of a step parent who has a 35 year old stepchild. You know what I mean? I mean, later in life and they have adult kids and okay I, they, we live two states away I get to see you once every other month and we have lunch and that's it well you're pursuing through the opportunities you have it's slow it's difficult it's not easy but that's what you have that's how you got to do it right so take advantage of every one of those opportunities and if they crack the door open just kind of move right in and then you gently kind of work with them so the door opens further and further over time don't let defeat Make you stop pursuing relationship. Okay, in case you just joined us, um, I'm Ron Deal, and we talk about life and marriage and family and relationships on this broadcast. We do it every Tuesday at 12:30 uh, here on Periscope, and uh, spontaneously, you never know when they're going to come. We're wondering uh, today how long you think a Periscope should be. So as I'm talking some more, just feel free to add some thoughts or comments on how long you think a Periscope should last. Okay, and also what topics you'd like some training on. We're always interested in hearing from you about that. Um, do's and don'ts for step parents. Here's another one. Don't, step parents, unilaterally change the rules. Unilaterally is the key word here. Or try to make up for the past mistakes of other parent figures in the child's life. I, I, there's two parts to this. The unilateral change is it usually is the, hey, I know what's best and I know what's better for these kids, so here's the rule change. You used to watch this much TV, now you're only gonna watch this much TV. If you do anything unilaterally, you risk, in a fragile relationship as a step parent, you risk losing uh, connection and losing authority and uh, you know making it hard for the biological parent to stand with you. Don't ever do anything unilaterally. Go to the other parent, talk it through, make some decisions together, then you guys can work present those to uh, the kids in your life okay so um, oh, oh and don't try to make up for the past I love the heart of a step parent who wants to do that you know I'm thinking of a stepdad who his stepchildren their biological dad's out of their life he's not involved and man he's got a big heart for these kids and he really wants to help them be responsible learn and grow and so he just kind of works super he's super stepdad right and, and, you know, sometimes that works, but oftentimes it just feels overwhelming to the kids. It feels like too much and uh, too much too fast. And so just, you know, track with them, right? Pace with them in a way that's acceptable to them. Okay, do listen to the child. Oh, by the way, if you have questions or comments, uh, Shannon's gonna pass those to me and then we'll get to them here in a little bit. Listen to the child. If, if they draw you in in a quick, quick and fashionable way, I, I used the word pace a minute ago. Pace with the kid. Let them set the pace. So a child who is open to you and loves you and welcomes you, bear hugs you and wants you on there, you know, playing with them, go with it. Absolutely. And every once in a while somebody will say to me, wow, Ron, you kind of talk about how long it takes, but it didn't take us very long at all. Great. That's a grace and a mercy in your life. Go with it. Don't look that gift horse in the mouth. If on the other hand, their pace is slower than you, you got to respect it. It's hard, but you do. Uh, don't get impatient. I, you know, when I say that out loud, honestly, for some of you, you just roll your eyes. <laughs> and I get it. It's like, are you kidding me? Uh, I've been working at this and hitting a brick wall for so long. Yeah, I, I understand. It's really hard sometimes. If you can just add a little more patience to the, to the process, 
and maybe relax a little bit more. Maybe don't run against that brick wall quite so hard. You know, relax, down, downgrade your expectations. You might find patience comes back and sometimes that actually helps them soften a little bit towards you as well. Do communicate with the other biological parent a lot. If you ever make a mistake as a step parent, here's the mistake I want you to make. Error on the side of protecting your marriage and, and, and talking to the biological parent. If you're not sure about a decision or what you should say, don't. It's okay. Just say, hey, I'll get, I'll get back to you. Find a way to check in so that you can be a stronger team and you can have more confidence. That's really what we're chasing here is confidence, okay? So, in summary, persistently pursue the kids. Pace according to their openness to you because your power, there's a lot of P's in this, isn't it? your power has, is, is in your relationship with them. So, the, more, the deeper the bond, the more power you have. Okay. Um, we get a, a comment. Yeah, how do you build a relationship with stepkids when your bio dad and your spouse are not engaged? Okay, great question. So there's a challenge. When the bio dad is not engaged, I'm, I'm going to assume that that's the bio dad in the home, right? But it could be the biological dad in the other home, as in the ex-husband sort of situation. Um, but let's just assume the bio dad is in the home for a second. Uh, if the bio dad is not, if the bio parent, let's just put it that way, is not supporting the step parent, is not really involved themselves, uh, oftentimes there's a, there's a big vacuum in the child's life and heart, and that tends to go one of two ways. Either that, that openness creates a vacuum where they're just welcoming of anybody who will give them time and attention, and the step parent can be one of those things. Or it tends to go the other direction where the child is closed off to everybody and the door shut for the step parent because they're just, the child's hurt and really longing for the other parent. And so even though the step parent's there, they're not gonna give you the time of day. It tends to go one of those two directions. Um, if, you're, if you're being pushed out, man, again, that's back to that tough, the door's closed. Well, don't give up, don't stop, because you're the one who's motivated. And anytime you're motivated to pursue a relationship, you have influence and you can't quit on that. So I would say stand outside that door and just continue to be present around their life, uh, knowing what, it's almost like you're talking through the door. You ever done that with somebody? You know, they can hear you, you can hear them, you're not really together. That's what it's like a lot of times. But at least you're there. At least you're there. And what you're praying for, what you consistently are pursuing is them to crack the door open. Okay, one last thing, and uh, and we'll finish up. Uh, earlier this week on Facebook, and uh, find us, by the way, Family Life Blended on Facebook. We posted an article about uh, what, what labels to use with in a step family and we got lots of great comments and there was good stuff came in and uh, I kind of flagged a few of those comments and I thought I'd just mention one of them to you uh, because it raises lots of questions this whole issue does uh, what name so Jay said what name can be used out of respect that the position of stepmom is not a peer or a sibling but they're an adult or a a figure of authority. So what's a name that kind of represents that authority you're trying to have? She says, I was raised to call all adults by Mr. or Mrs., Sir or Madam, out of respect. That seems too formal, though, for the loving relationship between a step-parent and a stepchild. I agree with that, Jay. So how do we avoid the first name basis, right? You know, the kid just calling you by the first name, but not necessarily take away the mom label for the biological mom in the other home. All right, so she's a stepmom, and she's wondering, you know, what's the appropriate label? Well, here's my answer. I don't know. <laughs> and, and here's what I mean by that. I think you have to co-create an answer. I don't think one answer fits all people. First of all, step parents, please understand, only 30% of all stepchildren will ever call their step parent either mom or dad. Only 30%, and it doesn't matter how long they've been together, right? Sometimes kids do that within two weeks, they're calling you mommy. And other times it's six years or 20 years and they finally get to a label that they feel comfortable with like that. But only 30%. So that means for two thirds of parents, it's gonna be a label other than that. And that's very normal. So what is respectable? I think that depends on your culture. I think it depends on your ethnicity. I think it depends on where you live. I get to go to Ghana and work with kids who have been trafficked and rescued. And the first time I went, I was Paul Ron. Let me tell you, that's pretty cool. 
pretty cool, but the second time I went, I became a dad. And that's really cool, all right? That just warms my heart, but that's their label. I didn't push them, I didn't require it. We kind of just figured that out together. When I say co-create the labels in your home, I mean have a conversation about it. Ask them, what would you like for me to call you when I introduce you? When we go to the school night and meet your teachers, how should I introduce you? What, what, what makes you comfortable in how you introduce me in public? What if you're the stepmom and you say to this child, what if your biological mom's in the room? I realize that's a different thing and, and you would want to call me something different if she's there. That's okay with me. What, what's comfortable for you? This conversation is where you co-create what is going to be acceptable for both of you. And you can find something that works and that feels respectful and that honors your position in the home and at the same time acknowledges the child's loyalties and that mom is a pretty special label and may only be used for one person ever. Talk about it. You guys can figure it out together. It's good to have you with us today. Um, be sure and share this. By the way, if you swipe to the right on iOS or swipe down on Android, you can see the share button. We'd love for you to be telling your friends about this every Tuesday at 1230. Thanks for being with me today. Again, I'm Ron Deal. This is our Periscope on Marriage and Family Relationships. You can follow me on Twitter at Ron L. Deal, or you can follow us here on Periscope. Uh, so whenever we have a spontaneous one, you'll be able to uh, chime in.